Okay, so we're back from Wix and I'm really excited about this project because it should be accessible to all of you and you should be able to make one at home if you want. Pretty much all the stuff I bought for this swing seat I bought from Wix. So if you have a hardware store near you, you'll be able to pick everything up from there. Okay, so the first thing I bought are a lot of these boards which are 7 by 2s which is 180mm by 50mm. These were twice the length but I cut them down in the car park so they actually fit in the car. Now if you have the equipment like a table saw and a plane of thickness to machine wood up yourself, it's normally better buying bigger boards and then cutting them down instead of buying pre-cut stuff. The equivalent of these pre-cut were 28 pounds, but these big boards were 16. So it's worth, you know, spending the time to cut them down yourself. Next wood we got was four two by fours, which will be the four legs of the swing seat. And lastly, we got this pine beam. Now this is normally a fence post but it will work absolutely fine for this swing seat. Now that's one thing I wanted to mention. The best woods for a swing seat are obviously hardwoods like oak or Iroko but if you don't have a lot of money like me and you don't want to spend a lot of money on hardwoods for your swing seat you still can make out of pine and make it last just as long. When we get to that stage, I'm gonna be showing you all the treatments and the products I add on top of this pine to make it last many years. Okay, so we cut all the slats and we plane them all square. A tip when you're cutting long lengths of material, and especially if they're thick, I would definitely buy a ripping blade on the table saw. You might have saw how quick I was passing them through. That is because I put in a ripping saw on my table saw, which means the cuts are much faster, and you get cleaner cuts with the ripping blade when you're doing rip cuts. If I use this blade with more teeth, the cuts would have been slower, and there's a very high chance it would have burnt the wood, because there'll be more friction in the cut. So definitely get a ripping blade, you'll get cleaner cuts and it will be faster. So what we're going to do now with all these slats is take them to the router table. I put a small round over bit in it and I'm going to pass them all through and round over each of the sides so then when you sit down it's comfortable and uh, water will drain off it easier.
So all the slats are cut up and all the edges have a nice round over on them. Now before we paint them, there's a few things we've got to do. First is sand the edges, I've already done that. You want to make all the corners as smooth as possible. The rougher they are, the rougher the paint finish will be in the end. Another thing I did is with pine there's quite a few knots. So wherever there was a small knot, I squeezed some super glue in the crack to seal it up. And that's because once you made the swing seat, you don't want any of the knots popping out and then you'll have a hole in your seat. So if there's any big cracks, I would squeeze some waterproof glue in it, or if there's small knots, you can squeeze some super glue in it. And the final thing I wanna to do to the slats before painting it is adding some wood preserver. Now all these pieces of the pine are treated. However, if you buy big boards, it's quite likely that that treatment didn't go all the way into the middle of the board. And you can tell that the treatment hasn't gone all the way through the board because the outside is green and this face I cut on the table saw, so this is a fresh face and you can see the green fades away and it's, you know, it's got just untreated wood on the inside. So it would be a good idea to treat the wood again, especially the end grain as well, with some wood preserver. There are a few different companies that make wood preserver. It doesn't really matter which one you get, they're all pretty much the same. I'm gonna be using this rock seal one, which says it adds 10 years of protection to softwood, which is great and obviously paint on top of that will add even more. And if you didn't want to paint your swing seat, you can just use this. It is waterproof and it prevents rot and mold on your swing seats. So it's a very important product to use with outdoor furniture. Right, so I'm gonna add a couple of coats of that on all the slats and then we're gonna get painting. Okay, so the only thing I didn't pick up from Wix were these metal seat frame parts. I picked this up from a reclamation yard, but you can find them on eBay or if you're really lucky, in a dump. And they're pretty simple. They're just some kind of bent steel with some holes in so you can screw in the slats. The two end ones have this welded support in so you can screw an armrest onto. And they've also got this welded loop so then you have somewhere to attach the chain, obviously. Now these will be positioned like this and um, create a really comfortable seat. But if you don't have access to tools to make one yourself or you can't find one online, you still can make this seat out of wood. You just would basically replicate this with some two by fours with maybe a bridle joint or a domino joint there and uh, that would be just as strong. It'll be a floating park bench. So before we screw the slats on, I'm gonna paint these metal components. So I got some metal black paint from Wix, which is suitable for exterior work. You can use any color you want. I'm going for black, and I think that'll look really nice, and it'll be a nice contrast with the slats, which will be painted gray. So to prepare the metal parts, I sprayed it with a jet washer, and I also sanded it to kind of wrap up the surface so the paint will stick better to it. So to bring you up to speed of what we've done so far is we've cut all the slats, we've routed the edges and we sealed it with wood preserver. And we've also painted all the metal work with some outdoor metal paint so that's going to last a long time and that looks all nice. Now you don't just want to screw all the slats to the framework now because once all the slats are together it's going to be very difficult to get your paintbrush in between them and paint the inside edges. So what we're going to do is paint the bottom and the two sides and the bottom is where we're going to screw into so the bottom is all done and we're going to leave the top. And the reason we're leaving the top is we'll have an unpainted edge to put onto the table or on the floor. If we painted all four sides then we'd have nowhere to put it down without ruining that painted surface. But if we did three sides they're all going to be good. We'll screw it on that way to the metal framework and then we'll just have to paint the front.
Okay, so all the slats are screwed onto the metal frame. So now the back and the inside faces are painted. We just need to add some paint on the front. Alright, and that is pretty much the end of part one. The seat is complete, and I'm loving how it's looking already. In part two, we're going to be making the frame for the swing seat, which is going to be really cool. There's going to be drink shelves on the side, and there'll be a lot going on, so check out that video in a couple of days. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. If you're interested in this series, then I'd really appreciate a like on this video, and comment down below what you think of the seat so far. Do you like the colour? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So thank you for sticking to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.